So I went to a comic expo and here's what I found. What is up guys, Justin here, AKA No Good Comics and welcome back to the channel. I am excited because I've got a bunch of books that I wanna show off that I was just, uh, I picked up over at a recent or a local uh, comic expo over in Wayne, New Jersey. They come around about once a month um, and it's really cool because these expos are really just focused on uh, the vendors or, or, or it's just really vendor focused, I should say. It's a, it's it's just bins, it's it's a, a lot of opportunity to just hunt, find keys, find um, back issue bins, find filler issues that you might be looking for for your collection, um, you know, new stuff, old stuff. It's it's really it's a really great um, kind of experience and uh, an environment. Um, and it's not you know there's not like celebrities or anything like that, so you really can just focus on the hunt itself. Um, I talked about this in a, in a previous video like a month ago when I was at the last uh, Wayne Expo that that had passed and uh, showed off some of the books then. So this is just another one of those type of hauls. Um, I know they have another one coming up in September as well, but uh, I have to say. There were, it was a cool experience and uh, on the extra or the little bit of extra added to this, I ran into a bunch of different people from the community, which was awesome. I got to hang out with my man, Jason, claiming comics. Um, I also got to see Justin, Nemesis Prime, and uh, my other buddy, Justin, who um, I forget his Instagram account. I will add that in the description though, uh, who was nice catching up with. And uh, another guy, Ron, who drove all the way out from Philadelphia, which was wild. Um, so again, uh, all the different people I ran into, shout out to all of you. Great hang hanging out with you guys on a Sunday, especially where there, you know, this past Sunday was, uh, I don't know if you guys know, for Jersey and, and all of the East Coast, really, uh, Northern Jer or Northern uh, East Coast, we got hit with uh, this, you know, big storm, hurricanes and all this stuff. Luckily for where I'm at, uh, there wasn't as much of a hurricane. It was a lot of just kind of strong winds, uh, a lot of rain, a lot of rain. Um, but other than that, I just thought this was a good opportunity this past Sunday to just kind of hang out indoors uh, at this local hotel, uh, local hotel that had this, you know, this cool little mini expo. So, Found some really good stuff. I uh, can't wait to show you guys. But uh, in the meantime, take a moment, smash that like button. If you are new, welcome to the channel. Make sure you subscribe. I just hit that 900 subscriber uh, number, which is really exciting milestone and, and brings me one step closer to that 1K that I'm trying to cross sooner, hopefully, uh, uh, as we get closer to uh, uh, these next couple of months, you know, see where we where we land. Um, but again, um, I will be having a giveaway for that coming up, the 900 subscriber giveaway. Um, so keep an eye out for that in these next couple of weeks. And then, of course, 1K is going to be a huge party as well. So looking forward to that. Um, shout out to everybody who's supported the channel. Um, it's been a little over a year that I created the channel and it's really just been tremendous. I mean, the community has been awesome. People I've met, um, um, being able to hang out with everybody live. I mean, you guys know the deal. If you've watched the show, if you've watched my channel before or seen me on other people's channels, you guys know the deal. Um, it's just a lot of fun. So, and if you guys are new to the community, I highly recommend getting more involved, watching more people's content, reaching out to people, drop comments in the comment section. That always helps the creator and the creator's videos. Um, let us know what you think of these things when we're putting them out there. Uh, if you guys uh, see some books that you own, let me know. Let me know what you think. If you've read them before, I always like to know all that kind of stuff. Stuff. So uh, feel free to use that comment section below. And if you are in the premiere chat right now, of course, thank you so much for taking that time to hang out with me here today. I'm sure maybe you're eating your lunch right now or whatever the case may be, or maybe you're just catching the replay later on. Either way, I appreciate you. Um, but let's get into the books. So uh, let's see what we got. So I'm going to start with some of the cheaper books that I found. These were just in the dollar bins. Actually, I got these two here for, uh, it was a dollar each. It was buy one, get one free though. So literally 50 cents. Um, I could not pass up on these Jenny Frizen covers. Um, I don't own these. A lot of these uh, Wonder Woman uh, books, these uh, especially the Frizen stuff, I was like kind of trying to hold myself back from purchasing over, over. I mean, now, now that I'm only buying three books a week um, for the new stuff, I've been, you know, really trying to not make these one of those three. Um, but I mean, man, if I could just own them, I really would like to. And, and well, in this case for a dollar or, or 50 cents, I could not pass these up They're They're in mint condition. Um, and then I got this one as well. So, um, I thought these were both just absolutely stunning. Jane Frizen, easily one of my favorite artists. Uh, I mean, everything she puts out is just straight fire. Um, and she's so consistent with her work. So, um, yeah, for 50 cents each, I will uh, buy these every time. So those two there, uh, let's see. Then we also got a couple other dollar bin books here, some Suicide Squad. I've just been on like a hunt for Harley Quinn covers and uh, and, and keys and things like that, all based on the character. Um, I thought this was a dope um, cover right here. I've never read the Rebirth stuff 
Um, you know, it's just kind of a little, a little before my time in terms of when I started reading. Um, you know, I've heard some of the Rebirth stuff's really great. I heard some of it's kind of hit or miss. Um, I don't really know what's what, but, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll have some time to kind of go back and read some of that stuff. Um, but I think this would certainly be uh, one of them that I, I would like to check out. Um, so there's this one, and then I also... Uh, this was, I think this was like two bucks here, but this is a Jim Lee cover. Uh, anytime Jim Lee drawing Harley Quinn and the rest of this crew here, I'm certainly all over that for a dollar or two dollars, um, whatever it is. So yeah, really good stuff. Again, uh, just some more rebirth. Uh, so that I got those, um, and then more Harley Quinn. This was just a stunning cover I picked up. This was two bucks as well. Secret Origins. Uh, the artist here, Lee Bermehu. Uh, he, I know he's doing a lot of the, um, uh, Detective Comics, uh, variants right now. And at first I didn't even recognize, or I didn't know who this was. I couldn't tell just based on the, um, on the art. It didn't have uh, his signature or anything. So, um, but I had to look that up afterwards and, uh, yeah, really good stuff. So again, haven't read any Secret Origins. Uh, if you guys have read this, let me know if it's any good. Same thing with some of the Rebirth stuff that I just showed, uh, before I am curious about it. Um, I think this is like 12 issues or something like that. I wouldn't mind. Uh, you know, dabbling in some of that. The artwork on the inside looks pretty cool as well. So uh, just another cool book there. Um, this book, Fatal, I have never read before. I've heard about it. Um, my friend Jason I was hanging out with, he was telling me a little bit more about his Brubaker. So, um, you know, love Brubaker's work. And I uh, just thought that this is a, a dope cover, especially you see the hand down at the bottom there. Uh, hold that up a little bit. Uh, just a really like dark and beautiful cover. And I'm all about that. So I um, thought it was really cool. Um, Sean Phillips doing the artwork and stuff. Uh, it's a ghost variant as well, which, uh, I wasn't very familiar with. Um, by the way, I was talking to Jason about this. Jason, if you're watching, this is issue 15. We weren't sure what issue this was, but, uh, issue 15. So, uh, really cool stuff there. Um, let's see. So those were like a lot of the $2 or less books. And then, uh, I got this one here. This I think was eight bucks. Uh, America Chavez. I've become uh, a real fan of hers ever since I started reading the, uh, Kalinda Vasquez stuff with, uh, Carlos Gomez that just have been, uh, been coming out. Um, just really enjoying the character. So I thought this was just a dope cover. Uh, really this, I thought this was gorgeous. I've seen this around. I feel like this is a little bit more of a, of a famous cover compared to some of her other earlier work. I know the character hasn't been around too long, um, but certainly trying to, uh, you know, grab them as I go. Um, so I got that there. And then, uh, this was another one that I have not read. I've heard good things. I've heard good things from uh, uh, Jeremy over at Sparks Comics and uh, and a few other people just in general have talked a little bit about this. Uh, this is a Scouse Comics, um, It Eats What It Feeds. So um, never read it. I will dabble with it though. It looked really, really awesome. And I missed this uh, when this first came out. I was not on board with, uh, or I just, I, I missed the opportunity of getting this. So uh, Scout, Scout Honor, uh, Scout Honor, <laughs> Scout Comics um, stuff. I feel like for me, at least, um, I don't know. I've been kind of uh, uh, out of the loop on some of their stuff. So, um, you know, I figured this was an opportunity to check this out as well. Um, I don't know how many issues there are, but certainly something I'd like to uh, uh, read up on. Uh, and a, just a cool cover. Um, this was another cover by, I glanced at it and, uh, I just was like, I think I need to have this. So, um, <laughs> I went with this, uh, this Batgirl 35. I, I don't even know much about it. I, I really, um, again, this, this is part of the new 52 stuff. I've not read the new 52 stuff, any of it. Um, I will say I am starting to fall in love with Batgirl from, um, uh, her time in, in Nightwing, the current Nightwing that I'm reading, uh, and, and with what I've, I know just from that series, which I know is not a lot, but, um, you know, Barbara Gordon definitely wanted to, uh, or I'm, I'm keeping an eye out for certain covers, uh, I guess I, I can say. So, uh, this, I just thought this was a really cool cover. I love purple. Um, and so, yeah, thought this was good for the PC. Uh, and then last couple books, these are kind of some of the bigger books that I bought. Um, I've been on this Swamp Thing kick recently, um, between reading the Alan Moore stuff and reading the, uh, the new stuff that Ron V has been writing, just absolutely loving the character Swamp Thing. I know that they're two different, technically two different Swamp Things from those two series that I just mentioned, but, um, generally speaking, I just love how dark the overall like um vibes are from these types of books um the illustrations the panels it seems like at least from what i've seen so far a lot of the different artists uh, or just creators in general 
have kind of stuck to this specific type of style of writing and 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 artwork and the way the panels are laid out, especially in that Alan Moore stuff. You certainly see some of those panel layouts very similar in the new Ram V stuff and uh, and all just all of it. Um, I've really fallen in love with. I, I love the idea of this like Beauty and the Beast type of of a vibe really so um i've been my, i have a new goal here where i'm going out to try to get all of the uh bernie wrightson covers and uh so this is my second one here uh, issue number eight and this was a, a really nice copy of this thing i mean it's a solid black cover especially those uh you know the sides it's really tough to or i imagine it'd be really tough to find uh these type of uh these types of covers in a nice condition so um yeah this is issue number eight bernie wrightson um I was recently talking to my dad about Bernie Wrightson, and he said that uh, Wrightson was a, a, an artist that he really looked up to as he was getting into the business. So um, just a cool kind of, uh, you know, uh, note there on the side. But uh, loving these covers here. Um, so going after the rest of these Swamp Day, I think there's 10 issues all together. I have issue 8 now and uh, an issue 10. So slowly going to, you know, go after those. Um, and then these last two books, these were just... So... <laughs> Let me think. So th th this was, these were purchases that um, I, I try not to do. And, uh, and you know, sometimes you just got to go with your gut. You know, sometimes you have to go with, uh, with what feels right at the time when you're looking at a book or purchasing something. And sometimes those books are books that you may not have ever really realized existed before. Um, now, with these two books that I'm about to show, I was aware of the series. I just never had time to read the series. And I also never had time to really look through at all the different artwork and covers that um, that this series has, has provided. I think there's a lot of series overall. This is from the 60s and 70s. Um, so it was it was of that time and it's all it's all horror. It's the DC horror stuff. So um, I've always heard things about the DC horror stuff and, you know, people who collect it. Um, I used to not it used to not really be a thing for me to even consider. Um, but now that I'm getting into darker stuff, especially as I showed you, like the Swamp Thing stuff and just reading a lot of horror genre um, comic books in general, I've really been trying to keep an eye out for more of the type of books that I'm about to show you here. So um, again, I I, I want to start taking some time to read some of this stuff and get into it. Um, I'm just, as of right now, the whole going with my gut thing, going with my heart thing, I am just in love with the artwork. And again, talking about that like Beauty and the Beast type of vibes, it, this is written all over it. So um, let me, uh, so the first one here that I got, this is um, it's 12 o'clock, the witching hour. Uh, this was in 19, when I read it down, 1969 that this came out here. Uh, the witching hour, this cover, and let me just, uh, do a little bit of a close up here. Um, this cover just stood out to me, uh, and I really just fell in love with it. I mean, I love the, the, the light blues of the sky, um, kind of the, um, you know, let up in the background there. Um, and it just pops. I mean, even just the title across the front titles are, are important to me in terms of how they lay out on the on the front page there. Um, and I just thought this thing was beautiful. It was a beautiful copy. Um, and I was looking, I did some details of, so Nick Cardi did the actual cover artwork. I've actually never heard of Nick Cardi before. So curious if any of you have heard of Nick Cardi, let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. Um, and then I was just looking at uh, some of the, the creator stuff. So Jerry Conway uh, listed as one of the writers here along with Alan Reif, R-I-E-F-E, Reif, Reif, Reif. Um, so not familiar with, uh, Alan Reef, but, uh, Jerry Conway, of course, definitely have heard of, uh, and, and have read a lot of Jerry's work or, or not a lot, but I've read Jerry's work. Um, and then, uh, Wynn Mortimer and Pat Boyette and John Del, uh, I'm sorry, and Jose Delbo, uh, are the, uh, interior artists for this. So, uh, I took some photos of the insides. I will probably be posting them on Instagram in the next week or so. So if you guys are curious about the, uh, the panels on the inside, I will definitely be posting some of those. Uh, soon. So keep an eye out for that. But this was just an awesome um, uh, pickup for me, I think, uh, as I want to kind of start building out some of my horror collection a little bit more, uh, and especially stuff from the 60s, late 60s, early 70s. Um, I just really like this vibe, the style that, that they've been putting out from that time period. Um, so it's probably a really bad rabbit hole to go down, but I'm certainly starting to go down that rabbit hole. So uh, that is one of the big books that I got, this beauty right here. And then uh, the other book is from the same series. It's actually just two issues later. This is issue number six. And uh, this was by far my favorite cover out of all the ones that the uh, the vendor had that I was looking at. They actually had 
uh, I think they had like one through 11, issues one through 11 or one through 12 right off the bat. And then maybe a couple other um, uh, uh, higher issues from there on. But um, these first like six or seven issues really were unique to me, com especially compared to the, the ones that came after um, because of like the size difference in the title and also just some of the artwork. The artwork just blew me away compared to, like I said, like, I don't know, like issue eight, nine, 10. They were cool. Um, and don't get me wrong, and I'll probably want to collect them at some point, but these really stood out to me. And this particular issue was in stunning condition. I mean, really, I mean, I think I get this pressed and this is like, um, like a, a nine, I don't know. This is, this is like low, low to mid nine, potentially. Um, I looked at the insides too, uh, the panels, the ink, everything, just the colors really pop. Uh, and again, just a stunning cover. I mean, if I, I know I'm getting a glare here, but, um, really really cool stuff you got the witches in the background there uh boiling up some some uh i don't know some sort of magic or something that they're cooking up there and these two kids here basically that are uh sh you know in a place they really shouldn't be and uh and, and and catching these witches and then you also have this like monster hand here you can see on the side so um i as i was flipping through i noticed that these books have a couple of different mini uh stories within them so i thought that was also pretty cool as well um i'm definitely going to read these issues i'm very curious kind of you know what the, the writing style was of that time um i was looking up online because um, even in the interior stuff, they weren't listed in this particular book. Um, but I saw online that um, that Conway was also involved with this, along with several other writers. Because um, again, I think there's like three different stories. And then even in those stories, I think they had like two or three writers that worked on them each. So um, and then same thing with the artist, the artist I wrote down. So I think uh, one of the one of the uh, titles within this issue was um, A Face in the Crowd. Uh, it was penciled and inked by Don Heck. Don Heck did a lot of the earlier Avengers stuff, and uh, and I actually as, some, as another artist that my dad had told me about, um, who he looked up to as he was getting into the business. So Don Heck, if you guys are familiar with uh, Avengers, I think I want to say he did like Daredevil, or I know he, he, Don Heck has certainly done some other um, you know key series, and especially um, like inking and things like that. But he did the penciling and inking in here for the first story. The second one was called The Doll Man, and that was inked and penciled by Jose Delbo. Jose Delbo I mentioned in the other issue as well. Um, so it seems like these were just some of the uh, um, the artists that were kind of, you know, working on these types of stories at the time from DC. Um, and yeah, uh, like I said, I just listed here. This, is, this one came out uh, January 1970. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say was the cover here was also Nick Cardi. So uh, it seems that Nick Cardi was all over this series at that time, and uh, and I just love his uh, his artwork there. So there's another close up, uh, real quick. So I mean that's those are the books that I got there. These these witching hours, man. I mean I really and I hold this one up again. I I just I love 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 the details um, in these things, uh, and these two particular ones were the nicest ones there. I think. I mean like no spine ticks, no nothing. Like they were just you know again something from the late sixties or early seventies. Like you know. I'll buy those every time. And especially, like I said, getting into this horror stuff, this this rabbit hole that I'm going down, especially the DC horror stuff, uh, it's not good for the wallet, that's for sure. But uh, I am definitely feeling great owning this stuff, having it in the PC now, and wanting to kind of hunt down some other things. It kind of gives me this new journey, uh, or I guess added on journey uh, to, to, to the journey I'm already on, right? Um, so anyways, that's, uh, that's the stuff that I got right there. Shout out to everybody that I ran into over at the Comic-Con. That was a lot of fun. Um, I will probably be at the next one, which I think is in Clifton coming up next month. So, um, you know, I'll check for more details on that. Um, but in the meantime, if you guys plan on going to any of these, if you guys are local to me, let me know. Um, otherwise, I think the next big one uh, or bigger show that I'm going to is uh, the one in Baltimore in October. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I will also be out in Vegas in early October as well. So um, I can't believe it, but October is only a little over a month away. I mean, we're almost at the end of, uh, of August. Uh, football season is starting up. I'm really excited for that as well. So a lot of things going on, a lot of things. But um, anyways, um, I just want to show you guys the haul. I really appreciate it. Make sure you smash that like button on the way out. If you guys are in the premiere chat right now, thanks for hanging out for this uh, short period of time, hanging out with me here. Um, I will have my Thursday show as always coming up, uh, my Thursday uh, premiere video, 1230 Eastern time. If you guys catch those, those top 10 picks for new comic book day. And uh, until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.